find a value of h that makes the system consistent. What we're going to need to do first is row reduce this matrix. So in order to do this, we're going to have to multiply the first row by negative 3. Negative 3, negative 3h, and negative 12. This leaves our bottom row with 3, 6, and 8. We did nothing to this row. Now the next step is to replace row 2 with row 1 plus row 2. So what that looks like is, what is negative 3 plus 3? Well, that's 0. What is negative 3h plus 6? That's just 6 minus 3h. We cannot combine them because they're not like terms. And what is negative 12 plus 8? Well, that's just negative 4. And the top row remains the same. Negative 3, negative 3h, negative 12. Now, how can we use this information to figure out a value of h that makes the system consistent? 0, x1, that's the coefficient for x1, plus this is the coefficient for x2, 6 minus 3h, x2, equals negative 4. Now, this is just 0, so we can cancel it out. And what we're left with here is 6 minus 3h times x2 equals negative 4. Now, this system, remember this is part of the system that we have here, this system is only consistent if none of these values here equal 0. Why? Because if even just one of these equals 0, then this whole equation becomes 0 equals negative 4. And that is not true. That is a contradiction. So this statement is will be false if 6 minus 3h is equal to 0 because that's the coefficient on the x2 x2 can be anything, but 6 minus 3h, which is our coefficient, cannot be 0 because if, if 6 minus 3h equals 0, then we're going to get a row that looks like this. We're going to get 0, 0, negative 4. What that means is 0, since this is an augmented matrix, 0 equals negative 4. That is not true. So we want to make sure that 6 minus 3h does not equal 0. What can we do? We can just set 6 minus 3h not equal to 0. Then we can add 3h to both sides. What we get is h doesn't equal negative 2. And that's your answer for this problem. Now, let's look at another problem. Now, let's look at another problem. What we can do again is row reduce so that we get a 0 in row 2, column 1. So what we would do to achieve that is multiply the top row by 2. What we get is 2, 2h, and negative 6. Then we keep the bottom row the same. Now it's time to add both rows. 2 plus negative 2 is 0, so we're going to replace row 2 with 0. We have a 2h plus 4 here. And then we have 6 plus negative 6, which is also 0. Now the top row is just going to be the same, 2, 2h, and negative 6. Now, what we're going to do again is look at the row with h. You can pick any one. I prefer to pick the bottom row because it's simpler, has more zeros. If we have 2h plus 4 as our coefficient of x2, then it will be written as 2h plus 4 times, times x2 equals 0. 
Now, what does this mean? It means that no matter what we make, what, no matter what value we have for 2h plus 4, 2h plus 4, no matter what it is, will result in this equation always giving a true statement. And I'll explain what that means in a second. A true statement. The reason for that is, let's say we plug in a zero. Say h equals zero. If h equals zero, then we have two times zero plus four times x2 is equal to zero. What this evaluates to is six x2 equals zero. Divide both sides by six and you have x2 equals zero. So really, no matter what you plug in for h here, you're going to get something times x2 equals 0, and the answer is always going to be x2 equals 0. Or, or, in the special case that h equals negative 2, we could say that 2 times negative 2, again, I'm just plugging into this equation right here, 2 times negative 2 plus 4 times x2 equals 0 which is 0 times x2 equals 0, which still gives us a true statement of 0 equals 0. So either way, uh, we have a true statement, whether x2 equals 0 or 0 equals 0. No matter what we plug in for h, no matter what we plug in for h, So no matter what we plug in for a value of h, doesn't matter what it is, the system is consistent. And this makes sense. The reason for this is that no matter what you put here, something equaling 0 is, something can always equal 0. x2 will be the thing that equals 0. And what this means is that h is any real number. I'll be doing problems 21 and 22 tomorrow. Stay tuned in. Thank you.